Welcome my friends in Texas. For the most part, it's been a very dry week, once again, with large parts of Texas receiving no rain whatsoever. Now, we do have a band of showers and thunderstorms moving over the area as of Sunday evening. It'll continue into early Monday to areas to the east. It's going to bring a welcome rain to a large part of Arkansas, but just very limited parts of Oklahoma and very little of Texas. Now, I've looked at the latest models, both in the short term and in the long term, and many of them are calling for continued dry weather. The jet stream is anchored well to the north now, and until we see a change in that, I don't think we'll see a change in the precipitation trends. Stay tuned to this week's edition of the Weekly Water Outlook. Well, it looks like it's been yet another week with very little rain across Texas. A bit more rain over Oklahoma, which has been in a very significant drought. Lighter amounts of rain to the east over Arkansas and Louisiana. But again, very little rain fell over the state of Texas last week, the entire week. If we look at percent of normal, about the only place that received some above normal rainfall were some scattered areas in Oklahoma. Those are those areas in blue. Red is below normal, and this deep red, as we've seen week after week, is well below normal rainfall, anywhere from 25% or a quarter of what would be normal down to 0% of normal rainfall. And if you look at the picture over the south here, uh, most of the area, very little rainfall, uh, well below normal rainfall over the last week. Now, I thought I'd sort of step back here and look at some of the trends and put up normal amounts of precipitation for the month of November. Uh, red is generally five inches or more, and green goes down to about one inch or so. So the primary areas that receive significant rainfall are the Pacific Northwest, parts of the south, and parts of the northeast U.S., and it does brush the eastern parts of um, Oklahoma, uh, eastern parts of Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas. And for the most part, I think this has been the trend. Uh, Central and West te Texas has not received any rain, so it's been below normal. But we have seen this gradient from west to east, especially the far eastern parts of Texas has got a little bit more rain than the eastern parts have. Now, the outlier here has been Arkansas, which has been very dry, and they normally receive more rain in November. So I think, in summary, while I do see some signs of this trend, it's still well below normal for this time of year. If we look at the drought monitor, uh, with very little rain, you would expect it to get a little bit more uh, extreme as far as drought. The current percentage of drought in anywhere from D0 to D4 is about 71%, and it was close to 70% last week. So as I mentioned a number of times with the temperatures cooler, uh, you're not going to have very much difference from one week to the next, but the trend is for deepening drought and expanding drought over the uh, southern, southern area, including Texas and parts of Oklahoma. As you might imagine, with no rainfall, stream flow is well below normal over most of the region. Almost the entire state of Texas, all of Oklahoma is experiencing below normal stream flow, and in that dark area of brown, that's well below normal stream flow. Now the jet stream, uh, we've seen some changes in the last three or four weeks as I've discussed. Uh, this week, early in the week, we're going to have a jet stream that's dipping uh, down into the Midwest, and that's bringing a frontal uh, system through the region that'll produce some heavy rain over parts of the area very early this week, uh, Sunday into Monday, and then that'll move off to the east. And we're getting into this sort of a west to east flow, a zonal flow, what we call uh, from west to east. I call it a sloppy zonal flow because there will be some embedded systems in there. But for the south, including Texas, this looks like the jet stream will be north of the area, and it's going to be very quiet. There won't be much atmospheric energy to bring down over the area, so that means not many fronts will be passing through, and any fronts that do pass through are going to be very weak and not be able to produce a lot of lift, not be able to bring a lot of moisture into the area. So this looks like this is going to be that pattern. Now, sort of looking at the, the bigger picture once again, I mentioned that the Arctic Oscillation here, and that's that top chart, uh, recently went above this line here. So it went from negative, prolonged period of negative, up to positive. And it looks like for the rest of the month it's going to stay positive. Um, not necessarily strongly positive, but in the positive range. And that has relaxed that east coast trough. So what we're looking at now is that from this, this is the 6 to 10 day jet stream. This area in red here, or above normal 
uh, heights. And what that means is that the ridge of high pressure is going to be pushing north, and that means the jet stream is going to be much norther, uh, further north than normal over the central and the eastern U.S. With this area of blue here, this is below normal, the jet stream is going to dip. So the pattern that we're going to be seeing, jet stream dipping in the west and bowing in the east. And that's consistent with that Arctic oscillation turning positive. Uh, what that's going to mean for the south, including Texas, again, is that the jet stream is going to be well north of the region, and that's going to mean dry temperature or dry conditions and most likely above normal temperatures. And this is one of the models I show from time to time. It's just raw model output. I think there's a much better reliability in week one. Week two tends to flip-flop. But week one shows that very little rain is expected in Texas this week. Um, the rainfall that's over Oklahoma and Arkansas and Louisiana is with that first frontal passage. And that could brush eastern parts of Oklahoma and Texas as well. Uh, week two, generally, I think the message here is light precipitation. Uh, before I get too excited about patterns on week two, I'd expect a stronger signal. I don't really see that. So it looks pretty quiet. Um, I did want to mention uh, the how much rain it would uh, take to get back to a normal condition. Over most of Texas, it's in the three to six inch range or so. Uh, quite a bit more rains needed in Oklahoma, nine to 12 inches, and uh, western Arkansas as well. And I sort of outlined the first system that's moving through this week, and that could have some improvement in the drought conditions, maybe an inch or so of rain over those areas. But if you're needing nine inches of rain, one or Two inches of rain is not going to do you a whole lot of good. Better than nothing, but it's not going to get us out of that uh, drought condition that we've been in for many months now. Uh, this is a longer term model. I'll just sort of put it in here. This is the entire month. And I wanted to put that in here. Uh, this will change from time to time. But it just does re show that even though in uh, Texas and, and in the su south region, not as strong of a prediction of a drought as up in the Midwest, it doesn't show any signs that we're going to see any significant improvement or enhanced rainfall for the rest of the month. And I think that's verifying very well so far with the uh, below normal rainfall. So the trends and threats for this week over the south, uh, we, the system will be moving through early. Uh, it could be brushing uh, the eastern uh, part of Oklahoma, eastern part of Texas, uh, parts of Louisiana, and definitely uh, parts of Arkansas, much of Arkansas with an inch or so of rain. But by far, most of the state looks to be very dry once again with little or no rainfall this week. Thus, well below normal precipitation. I think it's going to average 25% or less uh, for the week, and the drought will persist. So the takeaway, one frontal passage this week, maybe one late in the week, mainly impacting Arkansas, just brushing eastern parts of Texas, eastern parts of Oklahoma. Otherwise, the story again is widespread below normal precipitation. Uh, that's been the weekly water outlook. I'd love to hear from you if you have any comments on the information I'm providing. You can always send me an email at john at bluewateroutlook.com. If you like these briefings and the newsletter, please pass it along to others who you think might benefit from it, and uh, they might want to subscribe. Again, thank you, and I will be updating this again next week.